daytime foxing and nighttime deer, all within the law, of course. Kai's pushing the limits of new digital sites. When it comes to air guns, Terry Doe is the godfather, which makes Nicole Moore the goddaughter in our new Air Gun Academy series. Combining pellet guns and night vision, James Head from Crackshot says which digiscopes are best for air rifles. David is on the new stump with festive news from the Boxing Day meets, and James assembles the best films in this week's hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Last time we saw Kai, he was cooking up a festive feast. He had to get a shift on though, as we were losing the light and still needed to head over to Tim Pillbeam's range to zero a brand new Bagara Wilderness in 308. A delivered that morning Hick Micro Alpex and then find some fallow. Thankfully, Kai has zeroed plenty of thermal and night vision scopes in his time and we break all known records. It takes just 15 minutes. Go again. You're recording, yeah? Yeah. That's pretty good, isn't it? You know, I've worked with a few of these, and uh, this uh, Hick Micro Alpex, I'm quite impressed really how fast I managed to get it on target. To be honest with you, it's quite easy to, um, to navigate around. Um, I need to play around with about 10, 15 minutes to kind of understand how it fully works and holding the button down to press save and everything. Um, like I said, it's got the one, pretty much got the one shot zero. We can freeze the screen like we did there really. I've got, you know, a couple of targets. I slipped in the middle of one there. That's just, hu that's just human error. But the others are bang on where I was, uh, where I was aiming. So, so let's see what it's going to be like out in the field. Many of you will be familiar with the day-night Alpex scope. Among other goodies in the Hick Micro Parcel is a Thunder Thermal add-on. Now, although Scotland has given the green light to use thermal optics on deer whatever the time of day, you still need to apply for authorisation through nature.scot, formerly SNH. Here in Englandshire, no authorisation required, but you must stick to the general rule of any time between one hour before sunrise and one hour after sunset. That means clock watching. With just two hours between now and this evening sunset, we'd better get moving. Kai scans the ground with another new unit, the Condor. I tend to like the white hot. It's, I think it's because it's what I've been used to in previous, um, previous handheld kind of thermal devices, really. The white hot to me is uh, kind of chewed into my eyes. <laughs> to start with, it picks up just pheasants. Kai is part of a small syndicate here. You found out where the pheasants are then? Definitely. Yeah, there's one just in front of us. I mean, our, our shoot days are very casual. I wouldn't call it uh, a massive bag. <laughs> One for the pot, I think it is, which is kind of cool. I like that. You know, it's pretty much almost like a walked up thing, really. Heat source is in there at the moment, but the wind's coming in our face, so we need to go in that direction. Anything that way, we're just going to wind, so. Fox. As we work through, Kai picks up a heat source. It's a fox. He pockets the condor and gets the rifle onto the sticks. With the feeders just a few yards away, he'll have bragging rights if he gets this. Fox moves just as he shoots. Fox down. But the knockdown power of the 308 does the job. Yeah, I just come across here and just see uh, there was obviously a fox coming down. Uh, when you fox, didn't realise it's going to be quite so close. <laughs> yeah, that must be about 50 yards, if that really. So I'm really pleased with that. I'm really pleased actually. So um, I don't know, the guys in the shoot will be pleased because we have been trying to get some of these numbers down on these foxes. So we're going now, we'll have a look and they're still light enough and then we'll go for deer as well. There it is. Beautiful colours. Nice winter coat.
dog fox. Gorgeous coat Beautiful, on that. Isn't it? Yeah. A st stunning fox. As we move on, Kai picks up deer on the edge of a pony paddock. I would say roughly about 180, 200 meters in front of us, there is a, um, a group of deer. I can see it with a the thermal very clearly. I can't see it with my eyes. Actually, we're going to creep along the hedge line here, and then there's a big tree in the middle. We're going to try and hide behind that and walk up so you can get closer and identify them, and then maybe get in position take a shot. Unfortunately, they can see us. Can you hear that deer? That's a warning that they know we're here. <laughs> I can't even see them. We're fighting with the um, with the daylight now, so we're just going to have to kind of just crack on with it. Kai keeps scanning and moving, scanning and moving. Ponies. Eventually, we find another group. So we just spotted some deer in this field. The weather's changed slightly, it's getting a bit wet and windy. Wind's good, wet's not so good. Um, we're going to head over in this direction. They're, they're about 250, 300 yards away. So we're going to try and creep behind this bush and see if we can come out and, and identify and maybe shoot one. They must wind us as they too disappear. Then the condor picks them up again on the woodland edge. We are conscious of the time. We are losing the light. So sunset was 15.51 uh, and it's now 16.22. So about half hour left. Um, as you can see, the weather has turned. And also with the rain, it's kind of got a bit misty. So the visibility's got a bit poorer. But we'll uh, hopefully we'll get some deer come out and be able to test out the uh, the scope. Find something. But yeah, we we did. There was a group of deer in this field, and they're at the bottom of the tree line. They just moved on, so we went to come back. Standing in a gap in the hedge line, two fallow graze out from the wood towards us. Kai is happy to take the shot with the Alpex. That was all good. It's pretty <laughs> blooming dark, but we are within our time. I know. It's pretty amazing, actually, and the clarity is really good. We were bouncing around backwards and forwards, weren't we, for a long time, really. One in the back. The last moment, we managed to get onto those two there, and uh, we took the chance, took the shot, and um, so it's dropped maybe about. 80 to 90 yards in front of us. So we'll go over now and um, I saw that out. And like I said, it is pretty dark, so I'm literally going to try and extract it pretty quick. We've got quite a quite a long distance to the truck. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, no, pleased, really pleased. Um, the uh, the scope really kind of yeah came into its own really, and uh, the clarity was unbelievable. You know, at this time of of the evening in the last hour so uh, couldn't have really asked for any more and uh, considering the rifle as well it's just come straight out of the box um, we've had a fox and a deer this evening so uh, I can't really complain at all about that it's uh, pretty impressive so that's the out shot there look that's it that's it out and then it was facing because it was coming yeah so behind the shoulder and then in shot was here, look. just here. With a 700 meter walk back to the Thank truck, the Kai decides to turn our fallow into a backpack and clean it closer to home. It's such a good way of doing it if you don't have to go too far. So this is the, the fun part. So I, I deliberately haven't gutted her just because if I do this with her guts out, with, a, with all the, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna go all on my back, so. I'm gonna bear the weight, really, and try and have a, a clean extraction. Oh. So, got this. <laughs> oh, it's off. Oh, no, I 
I don't think you've got. I think you might have more, more, more Danny Bath than you thought. Well, it is what it is. <laughs> oh, God. It's been a successful day from cooking delicious venison roast to a rifle and scope that were unboxed and zeroed with just a handful of rounds to a topsy turvy stalk. Where normally it would be deer then fox, it was fox then deer. Sometimes you just take your chances when they present themselves. For more information about the Hick Micro range, including the new 4K resolution Alpex Daynight Scope with Laser Range Finder, available January 2024, go to hickmicrotech.com. Thank you, Kai. I expect we'll be talking about last light technology quite a bit in 2024. Please let us know what you think in the comments below. Next up, from venison in the wild to turkey on a plate, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Hundreds of thousands of people have enjoyed traditional Boxing Day hunt meets all across the UK. These pictures show the Ledbury hunt riding through the centre of the Herefordshire town for the 178th time. It's estimated that more than 2,000 people cheered the hounds on as they took part in the annual parade. Meanwhile, here are the Taunton Vale Harriers meeting in the Somerset town of Vivliscombe, where hundreds turned out to watch. Antis tried to disrupt a few meets. In Lewis, East Sussex, Antis applied to the town council to book a wheelbarrow race where the hunt had planned to meet, but the hunt simply applied for permission for their meet an hour earlier, so Antis cancelled their race. Ledbury master David Ridvers said trail hunting is stronger than it's been for years. This is something that people come from all around. We've had the most incredible reception from the Ledbury town state again. Uh, it brings a huge smile to your face realising that, that there are normal people out there who, who still celebrate things like events like this. And um, you know, this is this is the colour that, that, uh, that makes society interesting, makes it fun. Nigel Farage has hit out at antis who try and interfere with traditional Boxing Day meets, accusing them of being anti-fun. Nigel spoke out on GB News saying those who were trying to ban countryside activities with protests were out of touch and are just trying to stop people enjoying themselves while pursuing legal and legitimate activities. And it's all about people going out riding, seeing the wonderful dogs and actually having fun. And I get the feeling that PESA and others, what they really object to is people actually enjoying themselves. Meanwhile, a huntsman who lets his hounds chase a fox has been fined by magistrates. Chris Woodard from Burford in Oxfordshire was leading a trail hunt earlier this year. He denied a charge of hunting a wild mammal with dogs, but was convicted. The court heard Woodard, aged 39, lost control of his dogs during a trail hunt and allowed them to pursue a fox. He was fined £525 and ordered to pay £1,375 in costs. Here's what happens when technology meets the countryside with an attempt to stop deer running onto train tracks. After months of research, the rail company LNER is using artificial intelligence to scare deer away from railway lines, where animals are regularly struck by fast-moving trains. After testing a new system earlier this year with Network Rail, the company has installed a system based around the use of trail cameras and an audible deer-scaring device. Once the AI cameras detect deer movement near the rail line, it triggers the automatic deer deterrent system. The new system is already in use on the East Coast Main Line and LNER says it's recorded 50 instances of deer being moved on in the first few weeks of deployment. A rifle used by the famous hunter Dennis Finch Hatton has been sold at auction in America. Finch Hatton was immortalised in the book and subsequent film Out of Africa. His 1905 bolt action 256 Gibbs Magnum, with a selection of original boxed ammunition, was sold by auctioneers Rock Island in the USA for $41,125. Hatton was a former big game hunting guide to Edward VIII. He died at the age of 44 after a plane crash. The name of the successful bidder hasn't been revealed. Some of the UK's leading vets are to hold a conference to discuss game birds. The Trusted Game Conference will take place over two days in February. It will discuss game farming, game release, licensing issues and the use of game as food. Speakers will include representatives from the National Gamekeepers Association, the NGO, Aim to Sustain and BASC. Link below. There's concern after one of the wettest winters on record that there's a serious risk of flooding to come in the UK next year.
One of the biggest areas of concern is the south of England, where groundwater levels are at an all-time high. According to the UK's hydrological outlook study, many of the south's chalk streams are well above normal. The River Kennet in Berkshire, for example, is subject to several flood alerts after November's rainfall reached 150% of normal levels. The Environment Agency has a special team monitoring the situation. And finally, hunts across the UK held carol services. Sutter Lions posted this video of one of them with a nativity on horseback. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stuck in the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Please let us know what hunting or shooting prezzies you got for Christmas in the comments below. David's favourite Christmas present is where you click like and subscribe below this film. Thank you. Next up, a word from Pulsar. Next, we start a new series called Airgun Academy. Nicole Moore is a pigeon shooter, a game shot, and a deer stalker, but she's new to air gunning. Her Jedi Master is Terry Doe. Hello, welcome to the first of the Terry Doe's Airgun Academy series. We're at Bisley, as you'll very soon hear with all the shots and stuff going off, and I'm here with my first student. Nicole. Nicole is an experienced stalker, but she's not an experienced air gunner. And today we're going to begin with the fundamentals of teaching, which is instilling confidence in the pupil. I'm so excited. Like, there's so many things to be excited about. I'm on, like, an army base. This is like my childhood dream. And I get to get a proper lesson in air rifle shooting, which I'm very much looking forward to because I'd like to incorporate that more in my pest control. And I'm here with Uncle Tell. It doesn't really get much bad, so yeah. Now the real training begins. I'm going to implant confidence in our pupil here. And most people would start with standing shooting or off a bench and stuff. Well, Nicole's not going to be dragging a two-ton bench around with her in the field. She needs to become her own bench. So what we're going to do is we're going to sit her on a beanbag, which in the field will be camo, and we're going to prop the rifle on the coal, and she's going to hit any target I nominate. Right, ready? I love that you have this confidence in Total me, confidence. Can I can tell you're going I'm to be good. Hit every single You've one. got the attitude, right. girl. Right, so face me, sit on that. I know you're, you're an ex-dancer, so it'll be done with grace <clears throat> and dignity. An ex 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 dancer. There we go, look. So, I mean, it so, doesn't get much more graceful than that. Does strictly it? shooting. So, what I want you to do... Now, you may think you're going to be shooting out there. You're not. You're going to be shooting down there. So, you're, you're side on to the okay. target. So, if you pull those lovely boots up there and there, lean forward, hug your knees. Lock this into there. Lock that into there. And lock that over there. Now, I'm going to go and get the rifle. I'm going to bring it back. OK. And you will, you will, within five seconds, you'll be holding a rifle more steady than you've ever done in your life. I OK. Promise. OK, forget about the way the rifle's sitting. Just look at the barrel. Look at the end of the barrel. Yeah. Right, that barrel is not moving. It's not moving. I'm lining it up with something on the floor and it's absolutely not moving. All we've got to do now is to get the rifle in, into a position where you can shoot it okay. and maintain that stability, all right? So what we do is we place it in the arm, not the shoulder, which okay. would be a bit different from you. Yeah. Put your hand around there, keep your finger away from the trigger. Wrap that there, get this hanging on something, either your, your little hooky thing here, yeah. look. Oh, yeah, that's So handy. there's no muscles being used to support yeah, that. Yeah, that's handy. Now, you just did something brilliant and you didn't even realise it. You raised your knee yeah. and moved it so that it was being Adjusted. supported yeah. by the arm. So what we've got here, OK, if that rifle, which is, which is the all-up weight of that, is about eight and a half, getting on nine pounds, which mm. in your hands feels heavy. Yeah. 
If that rifle weighed another 20 pounds, you would be able to support it yeah. on that position because okay. it's going through your arm to bones. Yeah. Bones, bones, and, you, and your seat. So there's your tripod. Wonderful. It I know you shoot off stable. sticks, don't you? you shoot yes. So this yeah. is, again, this is your own stick. Yeah. So look through there. I'm going to close the breech now. It's ready to go. Look through there. Find yourself a target. Okay, shoot the middle out of that target. Perfect. Yay! Ab absolutely perfect. Isn't that a good feeling though? I want to clap my hands, but I don't <laughs> want to move the position. <laughs> That's brilliant. I will, I'll recock it and stuff for you just for the time being. Wonderful. Think about the position now. What I want you to do, you're all ready, you can do this. Okay. Think about tension and stuff because yeah. you've not done this position before. I feel very, I feel very secure, but also tense. I feel like yeah. I'm going. Mm. So now I want you to cast your mind around and try and physically relax, because a relaxed muscle is is not going to bounce like this. Okay. If you do this a lot, initially your body is going to say, "What, what is going on here? Yeah. I don't, we don't do this." My body's doing that now. Yeah. It's giving me pins and needles. Yeah. It's so me... we'll do another couple of shots. <laughs> okay. And we'll know that we can do it. So you, by the time we've had another couple of shots, you'll know the equipment can do it. You'll yeah. know you can do it. Yeah. And you'll you'll know this guy who's towering over you now and giving you instructions, <laughs> sort of knows what he's talking about. So. Go again on that same target, okay. nice and controlled. Finger up to the trigger, nice and relaxed. Relax everything, squeeze that trigger, perfect shot. Yay. Another perfect shot. So that's, you know, you're knocking them down at 25 yards already. So we're, okay. we're well on. We'll do one more. Fabulous. And then you'll, uh, I'll give you a break because you're not going to need a lot of confidence by the looks of you. So uh, without me saying anything, Apply the finger to the trigger, relax, relax, relax. Absolutely Beautiful. perfect shot. Well done. Well done. Thanks, Uncle Del. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? <laughs> it works. It's now wonderful. imagine you then in your camo. Yeah. With um, your face mask and whatever. Yeah. Back against some foliage or a tree or something like that. Yeah. If squirrels or whatever you're, you're after that day are in range, if they're within Perfect. 40, 45 yards, you are going to take them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are going to take them already with what you've learned today. Yeah. Now we're going to break all this down and get in, into the little micro techniques that will make it even better. So you can okay. do a version of this into every stance we can Perfect. teach you. Okay? Yeah. The sitting position was, was, this version of it was what I based my entire field target career on, 10 years of hardcore competition. I based everything on this because of the stability. And the whole point of it is, it uses bones, not muscles. Everything is propped on bones, flat through to the floor on a sturdy pair of boots. There's no muscle reliance whatsoever. The old style of doing this mm -hmm. and putting that on there, you're putting a ball joint on a ball joint. So it wiggles you around, would never yeah. build a structure like that. If we take that away, the rifle's weight will work. We relax the arm. This, uh, this is doing no work. Nicole has just instinctively moved this backwards so this can prop this up. Mm. Your body will find the easiest and most efficient way of doing it. This is a, a, a tremendous shooting position to learn. Some people can't do it, but for them, here's another version. So, Nicole, just shuffle your feet round that way a bit. Okay, take this arm off, put it there. Rest that there, so you're pulling that in. Ah, okay, yeah. move this out a little bit, so you've still got this support here. Yeah. All right, that goes along a bit. Now you're holding that knee in, and if you need to raise the rifle, you pull the foot toward you, like that. Ah, if yeah. you need to lower it, you drop it away. So Ooh. that is another version that more people can probably adopt. That and, is more comfortable. Yeah. Work on them both because yep. the other one is more stable, but work on them both. That's more instantly comfortable. Yeah. There will be other sort of techniques and, and stuff we can incorporate. But the, the whole principle is bones, not muscles. Bones don't get adrenalized and they don't go out the night before and have a few drinks and come back all wobbly. Bones are there, they're solid. I don't do that either, Terry. I'm sure you don't. I'm sure you, you have soirees with your ballet charms. <laughs> <chums. laughs> but, but other less dedicated people do. And um, this position, Seriously, I, yeah. I, I did okay with this position over the years. It feels wonderful. And, and versions of it are, are taking people to world champions. And there's no reason why hunters shouldn't have the same benefits 
as target shooters do. Yeah, 100%. Love that. Thanks, Nicole and Terry. Now, air gun shop crack shot is perfectly placed to tell air gunners which night vision they should choose for their rifles. James Head gives us his rundown. Crackshot doesn't just sell air guns. The Devon and web-based shop sells a wide range of night vision and thermal scopes too. Generally new, you're looking around the 300 mark. And I would say you, you could stop at 5,000 if we ordered something in, but what we keep in store, you're generally looking at about 3,000 tops. I could buy cheap night vision online for £100. Why do I need to start at £300? Image quality. Mostly image quality. I'm going to stock something. I want to make sure it's pucker i want to make sure it's absolutely spot on that someone can take it out they can use it and not bringing it back every five minutes saying this is not very good why did you sell it to me i want to make sure that whatever i sell i've got confidence in myself so the cheapest we've got is this night visor so it's a bolt on to the back of your scope so it's not a, an actual night vision scope it just bolts onto the back of your existing scope so you still use your same crosshairs unlike the part where you would look through it you actually are looking at the screen, so it will put your image on this little screen. So it does mean that if you're shooting off a tripod or anything like that, it's on the top of your gun. You, you don't have to try and look through it, do anything like that. It's just a case of looking for the little screen. So it does make tripod shooting very, very simple. Next up is this little pod. Now, there are other pods we do normally have. However, we haven't got them currently here. But this would be just in a step up price range from the 300 mark to your 550 mark. This is the LRF version of the PARD MV007. So this is the MV007 SP LRF. So we can range fine with this one. And again, just like the, very much like the night visor, bolts onto the back of your scope so it uses your existing crosshairs as its way of looking through. It just turns your existing scope into night vision. So it's a very popular option for people who mostly shooting during the day, but would also like to just add that element of night vision to their lives. This is the ATN Excite 4K, this is the, the 5 to 20 version. So rather than using the pre-existing scope on your rifle, this is a full night vision scope in itself. So obviously the price is a little bit more because this is needs to be able to shoot during the day and at night, both very clearly, um, especially when you're using the digital screens during the daytime, it's never going to be as good as an optic, but they've tried to get the image quality as best as they possibly can. This is probably one with the nicest um, image quality out of all of them. Very, very quick as well. So there's no lag with the, a lot of the night visions tend to have quite a little bit of lag. So you, when you're moving the gun, it's not a nice smooth image. It does take a little bit of delay just to catch up. This is nice and smooth. And personally, if you're using that, perfect. So up in price a little bit more, we're up to the PARD. This is the DS35. Th uh, this is the 50 LRF version. The 50 is more dedicated to the air gun users. So there is a 70 that's slightly more zoomed in so you don't get as much wild field of view. With the 50, the field of view is much wider. It's a lighter optic than the ATN, which again, is very, very, very popular when you're putting it on some of the air guns. Some of them can be heavy, especially if you're walking around at night doing a lot of traveling. This is a great little unit for that. So this has got a built-in LRF. And it's also got the ballistic calculator, so we can range find everything. If we set all the ballistics up to your particular rifle pellet and velocity and all the you know bits and pieces you need to do, this would also help you out with your ballistic calculator. So it makes night shooting very, very simple, very, very easy. Image quality on this is probably on a par with the ATN. Very, very smooth, very, very quick as well. So again, you're not noticing any of that tiny little bit of catch up. It's instant. I would say the, the image quality is slightly better with the ATM, but you get a lot more features with this pod. So something we don't generally have here, but we have at the moment, which is absolutely brilliant, is the Pulsar. This is the Thermion 2 XQ50. This is the LRF version, and it is absolutely outstanding. So it's not just night vision. This is thermal. So instead of just having a night vision quality, you will be able to pick up, obviously, the heat source. I played quite a bit with this one, and there's no way you wouldn't be able to see what quarry you're using, especially for air guns. So I found this particularly useful when shooting rats, especially against leaves. I tried it against the pard. With the pard, I could find the rat once I found his eye shine, but him just moving around, he blended in with the leaves quite well. And with this one, he had no chance. If you're ratting, you want, and you're seriously ratting, you want to get into some those tricky rats, this is the boy. 
For Crackshot's full range, go to crackshot.uk. Thanks, James. Next, from seeing in the dark to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, brought to you by James Martington, it's Hunting YouTube. This time of year always brings a flurry of compilations and wacky videos on YouTube. I've been trawling through them and here are the ones I've most enjoyed over Christmas. First, here's a bit of fun from Edge of the Outback, who's cut together scenes from the Predator movie with shots through the scope on his FX Impact air gun. You could almost believe he's doing vermin control with a full auto machine gun. More madness from Demolition Ranch. They're cooking Christmas dinner by wrapping meat and veg around a hot gun barrel. It costs a fortune in ammo, but it works, sort of. Meanwhile, Kendall Gray goes hunting black bears in West Virginia. The twist is he wants to use the cheapest gun he can find in Walmart. After a failed attempt with a sub $200 shotgun and slugs, he switches to a budget rifle and heads for the woods. Next up, Owen Beardsmore from Service UK is out on a driven hunt in the lovely beech forests of Luxembourg. After a long wait in the high seat, a boar rushes through. Then it's back to dry out and prepare for the next day's hunt. But you'll have to wait for part two to see how that goes. Back to the UK and Mike from MSJ on Online is at the Lockton and Levisham shoot in North Yorkshire for a black powder day on driven pheasants. It's the first game shoot Mike has filmed for the channel. He's done a decent job of it and there's no denying that the flames and drifting clouds of smoke add to the atmosphere. Just a short distance away at Wentworth in South Yorkshire, White Rose shooting gives a different perspective on a driven shoot day with a running commentary from the beating line. Gundog photographer Nick Ridley is finding his pheasants the hard way, walking up with his cocker spaniels on a windy rough shoot day. The standard of shooting Shooting isn't the best, but it's lovely to watch the dogs work and they have a great day. Finally this week in the best end of year tradition, Jack Pike has this compilation of their best moments from their pheasant, pigeon and crow shooting videos of 2023. Well that's it for this week and this year. I've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the i symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you'd like us to pop into the weekly top 8, email me the link. James M at fieldsportschannel.tv and that's it for this week. If you haven't done so already, please whiz over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. You can click to like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, pop your email address into our register page, and we'll contact you about this show, Field Sports Britain. It's at 7 p.m. UK time every Wednesday, and this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>